Um, this is a photograph of Fredesco Hospital where I work, and this is our clinical site, as you can see, secondhand uh, shipping containers, uh, which have served us very well over many years of research. Just to put into perspective, there are about 14 million new incident cases of cancer globally as determined by Globocan, um, and uh, just over half uh, of these patients will die. But interestingly, the majority of new incident cases of cancer occurred in lower middle income countries in 2012, uh, 56% and 65% of the deaths from cancer occurred in low and middle income countries. Um, we know that cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer amongst women in the world, the most common being breast. But if you look um, in Africa, I just want to make the point that the proportion of deaths um, in women with cervical cancer is higher than the proportion in women with breast cancer. So this is the area in which we work and have worked for 25 years. And this is uh, an informal settlement. And this is the view from our shipping containers so most people live in, in shacks, um, and it is an area characterized by a high, high level of poverty. So we know that among HIV-positive women, there's a consistently higher incidence of HPV infection of all types, persistent HPV infection, particularly with high-risk types, infection with multiple types of HPV, um, there's a higher incidence of cervical cancer precursors. There's a greater failure rate of treatment of cervical cancer precursors and a higher um, incidence of cervical cancer, which is estimated to be six times higher amongst HIV positive compared to HIV negative women. And in 1993, the CDC proclaimed um, invasive cancer of the cervix as an AIDS defining illness. It's important to note that immune status has a significant impact on the expression of HPV disease and response to treatment and reduced cytotoxic T lymphocyte reactivity to HPV oncoproteins E6 and E7 leads to an impaired ability to clear HPV. And we know in organ transplant patients and patients with HIV suffer from increased rates of HPV infection with increased severity and duration of disease. Um, looking at H, just to remind us of, of the global estimates of HIV amongst adults and children, um, newly infected cases about 1.7 million per year. And currently there are 38 million people living with HIV. Deaths due to AIDS related illnesses um, have reduced over time. Um, and about 25.4 million um, have access to antiretroviral therapy. And the, since the start of the HIV epidemic, 75.7 million um, people have been infected and 32.7 million have desired, di died from a AIDS related illnesses. Um, Currently, 85% of pregnant women living with HIV have access to ART, and we have reduced new HIV infections by 40% since the peak in 1998. So let's just look at the HPV prevalence in HIV positive women, and this is from a meta-analysis uh, run by Clifford et al. Um, and you can see that in Africa, um, um, in women with normal cytology, 56% of women um, um, had high-risk HPV infections. It re was reduced in Asia and Europe, um, but in South and Central America, it was 63.5%, and in all regions, uh, just over 40%. Um, and amongst 796 cases of invasive cancer, 770 came from Africa, of whom 91.2% were HPV positive. And HPV prevalence amongst women with low cell was 
and women with high cell cytology, it was 92%. And with, in women with histologically confirmed CIN3, HPV prevalence was 96%. So we conducted a, a randomized clinical trial in Cape Town where we, we, had, we recruited six, just over 6,500 unscreened women aged 35 to 65 years of age, of whom 14% were HIV positive at baseline. And our comparison um, of HPV prevalence and CIN was amongst 956 HIV positive and five, just over five and a half thousand HIV negative women. And these data just show you the prevalence of high risk HPV in HIV um, positive women, which as you can see is more than double um, across the different age groups. What is the risk of developing CIN2 in HIV positive women? And this is over time. And you can see it's much, much higher um, in HIV positive versus HIV um, negative women. So I think it's clear that persistent infection with high risk types of HPV is a necessary event in the pathogenesis of cervical cancer. We know up to 80% of sexually active persons over the age of 15 will be infected with HPV at some time. Transmission is by skin-to-skin -skin contact, but most individuals will clear the infection within eight months to 24 months, and the infection will have no clinical consequences for those individuals. But a minority of infected individuals will demonstrate HPV-related disease, such as genital warts, respiratory papillomatosis, anogenital invasive disease and or precursors, and head and neck cancers. One South African study looked at over 5,500 women aged 35 to 65 and were followed over a 36-month period. 557 women were HIV positive at enrollment, and I find these data quite interesting. Prior to uh, conversion, um, high-risk HPV positivity was 20.3%. During uh, uh, the period of seroconversion, was 23.6%, but post serial conversion, high-risk HPV positivity increased to 50% nearly. So the, these pictures I took from um, an article published by Mark Schiffman, basically showing you a normal cervix to an HPV-infected cervix to a patient who has a precancerous lesion to a patient who has cancer. Now, the draft strategy of um, the WHO for the elimination of cervical cancer is the 90-70-90 by 2030. So the 90% the is 90% coverage with HPV vaccination of girls aged 9 to 14. 70%, the aim is for 70% coverage of screening with a high performance test at least twice at age 35 and 45, and hopefully 90% treatment of all screen positive women and cervical cancer treatment of, um, uh, uh, provided to 90% of women. So recommended strategies, as we've actually just heard now from um, uh, Maribel, uh, for the triage of HPV positive women and cervical cancer screening, include HPV genotyping with HPV 16 and 18 and cytology, P16, CHI 67 dual staining cytology, host methylation, viral methylation, and also, sorry, the use um, of risk th thresholds for return to primary screening, repeat testing, referral to colposcopy and immediate treatment. So how do we, uh, the WHO, sorry, has recommended HPV-based screen and treat approach in lo low resource settings. The concern, however, is the relatively low specificity of HPV testing in general, and specifically in HIV positive women, which may lead um, to over-treatment. So there are a number of ways of addressing this problem. Our group has evaluated using HPV type restriction 
and a more stringent cutoff on the expert HPV test to define um, a positive test prior to treatment in order to optimize specificity. So we have used the CAFAID expert HPV assay, assay that detects 15 types of high-risk HPV DNA, and the results are grouped into these five channels, which you've seen before. Um, and for each channel, there is a cycle threshold is generated, and values below um, cycle threshold cutoffs are defined as a positive, and this roughly correlates with viral load. Now, this is an incredibly user-friendly test, um, and it's an almost point of care because it gives a result within one hour. You get an, a, a, a cartridge which is pre-loaded with all required agents. No specialized lab skills are required. It's a fully automated real-time PCR instrument, which doesn't require batching and uses about one minute, minute of operator hands-on time. This is our um, person who does our testing and she has no laboratory training. So these are the readouts that you get uh, through the um, computer. So when we evaluated sensitivity of, um, and specificity of um, expert HPV using the manufacturer's uh, instru uh, instructions, and that is as is, we, in HIV positive women, the sensitivity was 93%. HIV negative, 88%, but there was this very low specificity in HIV positive women of 64% uh, compared to 87% in HIV negative women. When we restricted the analysis to only the first three channels and excluded the other channels, the HIV positive um, patient sensitivity for CIN2 plus was 91%, uh, 87%, slightly lower in HIV negative. But in HIV positive women, we were able to increase specificity to 68.9%. Uh, um, when we optimized the CT thresholds for specific HPV channels um, and of these first three channels, um, HIV positive women uh, sensitivity drops to um, 85%, uh, again, in HIV negative women. However, we were able to push the specificity of H high risk HPV testing in HIV positive women to 82%. So by restricting our result to specific HPV types and by changing the uh, cycle thresholds for defining a screen positive test, we attained an 85% sensitivity for the detection of histologically confirmed high cell in the whole group. And specificity for HIV negative women was 93% compared to 82% in HIV positive women. Um, so by altering these two factors, we were able to improve significantly um, specificity without loss of sensitivity. So we are now taking this into a much larger study, and those data are still, we've just screened 3,000 women, and those data are still being analyzed. So we know that visual inspection of the cervix is an intrinsic component of cervical cancer screening. And there could be naked eye inspection, VRA with uh, 3 to 5%, or colposcopic assessment. The new technology, though, that I think is exciting us all is automated visual evaluation, which capitalizes on mobile phone technology. Mobile ODT, mobile ODT has developed the enhanced visual assessment system. The device is essentially a cell phone with very good optical magnification and an enhanced uh, light source. And access to internet and software has been added to the phone to augment clinical utility. And it enables the storage of digital um, images uh, for record purposes and quality, quality control, and the potential to upload images to the, to the cloud-based um, system. This is what it looks like. 
Um, so it applies advances in mach machine learning methods and artificial intelligence, enabling the system to perform an automated diagnosis based on digital imaging um, of the cervix. And we've just been given a, quite a large grant to evaluate the mobile ODT system as an adjunct to assist and possibly replace the diagnosis of specialized colposcopy. And nurses will be trained to evaluate women participating in screen and pre-treat pre, uh, programs who are HIR, uh, sorry, who are high-risk HPV positive. I see I haven't actually uploaded my final version, so the conclusions are missing. Um, but I think we're entering a very um, exciting era of improved screening um, and accessibility of screening in low resource settings. Um, and I think it's urgent. It's just such a no brainer that, you know, 120 years later, after the uh, discovery of the relationship between pre-cancer and cancer, um, that we're still struggling to implement what we're doing, what we've been studying. And I think we're now at a point where we really can do large scale screen and treat programs. So thank you very much for your attention.